positive contagion, the phrase du jour yesterday from Mario Draghi, who gave a strong signal there will be no more interest rate cuts from the ECB. A cue for some profit taking in stocks today and for the euro to head higher once again. We'll look at stocks and another solid bond auction this time from Italy later in the show, but first FX and the euro testing 133 and the yen sliding once again after Japan unveils a new $117 billion stimulus package. I'm joined now by Reuters FX analyst Neil Kimberley. Neil, let's start with the euro. Uh, the worst of the financial strains uh, certainly seem to be over. Several banks, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they're saying that's it on, rates, on rate cuts from the ECB. All this has to be good news for the euro, right? I think you, obviously the price action since Mr Draghi spoke would suggest that the market takes that on board. For me, though, it's a question of relative economic performance between the eurozone and the United States of America. OK, we're not going to get another cut in benchmark rates. That seems obvious now. But where are the jobs going to come from? And the jobs, as Mr Draghi said yesterday, are not being produced. Monetary policy, he said, is not producing the jobs because we've got lack of mobility in the eurozone. Well, that's understandable. Linguistic issues, blah, blah. People don't want to move from country mm -hmm. to country. But if the eurozone is not going to uh, produce the economic growth that we ex would hope for and the US is going to do slightly better, then I prefer to be in the dollar, and therefore I'll be selling euros up here. But that's been the case for the last 18 months, two years. The eurozone economy has underperformed, the unemployment situation is much worse, yet the euro's at 133. I don't disagree with you. It just seems to me maybe this is the year now where the jobless issue comes more to the fore, because mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how the periphery can keep going the way they are at a popular level rather than the financial crisis level. And therefore, I'm hearing good sellers of euros 132.90 figure. There are some bids around the 132.40 as we're coming on air. There is some euro yen selling as, as we are coming on air. But Jamie, 132.20, there's an awful lot of models looking to sell the break on the back, move back down. And the range, one, 133 on, on, the, on the top? I like it, 133 on the top, 128 on the base. I don't see the euro going crazy one way or the other. I know that's bad news for the desks in London are hoping for a lot more volatility over 2013, but to me, mm -hmm. it's the last thing the central banks need is the euro going crazy. OK, uh, if you're bearish on the euro, you're, you're even more bearish on the yen. Uh, a new stimulus package from the Japanese government, they want the BOJ to target 2% inflation. But if the Bank of Japan can't get 1% inflation, how's, how on earth is it going to get 2%? It's never stopped them trying in the past, Jamie, believe me. And the yen is strengthened. Jamie, the yen, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole at these levels. We've got 89.50 barrier options. That's going to be resisted. Above that, obviously, the market wants to go for 90. Japanese exporters aren't selling dollar yen at the moment. They're working out their budget rates, probably come in around 85, the figure. But the bottom line is, if it's going your way, why bother doing anything? Because if you sell it today at 88 and tomorrow it's 89, you've had the opportunity because of a big figure. So you wait for the market to turn before you do anything. So there's that. There's no sellers. If you talk about the Japanese banks, their order boards are light. On the other side of it, Mr. Arve's infrastructure all the money is going to be spent on earthquake proofing. You have got to use a lot of fuel to do that sort of thing. The Japanese energy companies have got to buy a lot more dollars against the yen than they were prepared for. The dollar yen looks big to me. Now, monetary policy, Bank of Japan, it looks to me, it's like Einstein's theory of insanity, doing or definition of insanity. Do the same thing again and again and hope for a different, hope for a different conclusion. It ain't going to happen. But if it does, if it does work this time, then the market will give the policymakers the benefit of the doubt and sell the yen because that's what they know Tokyo wants. And if they fail, the market will probably assume that they've used every single policy lever at their disposal. It hasn't worked, and therefore the only thing that's left is to debase the yen itself. Finally, Neil, very quickly, um, Morgan Stanley today revised their dollar yen forecast up to 105. Earlier this week, we had David Bloom, HSBC, saying 74. David Bloom, I respect him enormously. I struggle with 74. Uh, I think that would be a disaster for Japan. I also think geopolitically, the Japanese government's going with a win this time. America wants a strong Japan to counterbalance China. They'll put up with a weak yen. OK, Neil, thanks very much and have a great weekend. In equities today, miners among the main movers. Shares in BHP Billiton and Rio Tinto falling by more than 2% after an Australian cyclone cut a fifth of iron ore trade worldwide. Both BHP and Rio have seen their operations affected as a result of Cyclone Norel, which has strengthened into a Category 4 storm, one shot of the most severe level. Shares in Germany's second biggest lender, Commerzbank, down as much as 4.5% today, with traders citing talk of a possible rights issue. Trading volume has been heavy, 
120% of its 90-day daily average a short while ago, compared to just 36% on the broader FTSE Euro first. And finally, Italy rounds off a stellar week for the Eurozone bond market. After Ireland's return to market and a solid Spanish auction earlier this week, Rome sells 3.5 billion euros of three-year bonds at a yield of 1.85%. That was the lowest since March 2010. That's all for today and for the week. Join us again at the same time on Monday for Market Pulse. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.